is the first section of the chi-squared tests chapter and this is about uh, goodness of fit and do we introduce the hypothesis test um, on different distributions now um, you've already encountered different types of distribution so um, for example discrete distribution or discrete uniform or uniform discrete distribution uh, for example where you get like um, uh, a fair die you expect all the probabilities to come up at the same time so that would be a discrete uniform distribution you've come across the Poisson distribution and the binomial distribution okay there are others as well in year 13 you'll be introduced to something called the normal distribution um, and then um, you'll also learn about the uh, geometric G, uh, distribution and a ne negative uh, geometric distribution they're all different types of distribution now how can you tell if a set of values fits a distribution okay because in theory okay so in theory um, you might get a certain set of values so for example in theory if I had a fair four-sided dice one two three four in theory the probability of each value would be a quarter now in real life I'm not going to get that exactly I might get some uh, a bit higher a bit lower how do I decide how good um, it is it fits that distribution so for example if I had something like this instead so let's say I had 0. Uh, 2 here, 0 0.3 here, 0. Point, um, uh, uh, 0.22 and 0. 0.28, I believe that adds up to 1. Is that a, a discrete uniform distribution? Are, those, are these things close enough to what we expect for us to say, yeah, that's a, that's a discrete uniform distribution? You know how do we how do we decide well this is where we do a goodness of fit test and this is almost like working out the spread how far uh, different or what's the spread from what I observe and what I expect okay so uh, this is what we're basically working out what is the spread so spread you can think of like uh, when you work out the standard deviation, that type of thing. What is the spread from the uh, observed values and the expected values? Yeah, that's the question we're trying to answer. So on the table that I've just created here, I could say, well, that the first one, there's a difference of uh, 0.05 between what I expect and what I observe. The second one is also a difference of 0.05. Uh, this one is a difference of 0.03. Here, there's a difference of um, 0.03 again. Yeah, so these are the differences between what I expect and what I observe. And this chapter basically is about measuring those differences and deciding is that difference big enough to say it doesn't fit the distribution or is that difference uh, small enough to say, well, it does fit the distribution. That's basically what this chapter is about. So we always come up with a hypothesis and a null hypothesis is going to be, well, the spread between what I expect and what I observe is, is small enough for us to say that um, there's no difference between what I've observed and the theoretical distribution. That's always H0, whereas H1 is always going to be that there is some sort of difference between the observed and the theoretical distribution. So we, H0 is going to be something like, well, you know, it is a uniform distribution, discrete uniform distribution, or a, a Poisson distribution, a binomial distribution. H1 is going to be, it's not. So H0 is always going to be, let's write this down, H0 
basically fits the distribution so I'm sort of shortening it down but you would obviously write it in the full explanation but this is to show you what's going on h1 is always doesn't fit the distribution doesn't fit the distribution and it all depends on the question and basically when we work out this spread we call it x squared so x squared is this um, spread that we're working out so we could say x squared equals this spread now I'm going to put it in quotes because it's not really um, the word spread but if you can think of it that way now there's two ways we can work out the spread method number one which is the, the long way which is to look at each observed value and each expected value and work out the difference between them okay so like what I've done here I've worked out the difference between each expected and observed value I can have written them in purple at the bottom then take each one of those numbers and square them so I would square this number I square this one square this one and then find and uh, then divide each one uh, so I'll, um, once I've squared them divide each one of these values squared by what I expect so I'd square this number divided by a quarter square this number divided by a quarter square this divided by a quarter square this divided by a quarter then I would find the sum of those so the sum of these values that I've just calculated from that squared um, divided by that and then find that value and I get a, a value which I call x squared yeah that's the difficult way of doing it the easier way of doing it and in the book it proves how we can get from here to here is basically you take each one of your observed values so like 0 0.2 0 0.3 or so on we square these numbers so you square each one of these okay you divide it by what you expect so I'd have 0 0.2 squared divided by a quarter and then um, 0 0.3 squared divided by a quarter 0.22 squared divided by a quarter 0.28 squared divided by a quarter I'd find the sum of those and then I will take away n and n is the number of observations and in most questions that uh, value of n the number of observations will basically be the sum of the frequency so I would use this formula here this is an easier way of doing it but just be aware it is not in the formula booklet yeah the formula booklet gives you this nasty one here the one that's difficult to use but you know this is not practical to use so we're going to use the one that's in the red bubble uh, to help us work out this value of x squared this spread okay so Billy and Mel have two four-sided spinners numbered one to four they each carry out experiments where they spin the spinners at the same time and add the scores together after each student has carried out 160 experiments so maybe that's the number of observations the frequency distributions are as followed um, so you can see that table here the number um, on the dice is on the top uh, row of the table and then these are Billy's observations the number of times each one came up uh, the number of times that Mel came uh, Mel's one came up and here this is what you'd expect each value to um, come up as now at GCSE you would probably just look at that and decide whether it's fair or not we are going to do a calculation to decide whether it's fair or not so the first thing that we need to do is to state the uh, null and I hope I um, alternate hypothesis so h0 is basically going to be that there is no difference between what we observed and what we expect in that case it's going to be that the dice is fair okay so we could write down something like this that the or there is um, no difference between the expected and observed outcomes okay or you could just say something like that the dice is fair yeah because that implies there's actually no difference between them 
or the observed and the expected, whereas H1 would be that there is a difference. Um, or you could say that the dice is not fair. Okay, in which case it would be biased, wouldn't it? Right, so what we're going to do is it says one of the students has a bias spinner. Calculate the goodness of fit. That's this x squared that we're going to calculate, x squared. Calculate the goodness of fit for both students and determine which of them is most likely to have the bias spinner. So let's start with Billy. Let's start with Billy's one. Now we're going to use the easy formula, which is the goodness of fit x squared is uh, the sum of the observed squared over the expected minus n. I'm not going to put all the i's in because we know we, we work our way across the table. So I'm going to do the full working series going so you can see what's going on. So with Billy, his first observed was 12. So we're going to uh, do 12 squared over what did we expect? 10. Okay, plus 15 squared over we expected 20. Uh, plus 22 squared over what we expected, which was 30. 41 squared over what we expected, which was 40. 33 squared over what we expected, which was 30. So all of these are in the uh, bottom row of the table. Uh, then 21 squared over what we expected was 20. And then the last one is going to be 16 squared over what we expected uh, which was 10. So we find the sum of those and then we subtract the number of observations, which is 160. So we'll work that out and see what we get. Now, when you do a question like this, don't just write down the final answer, write down the working in between. So the bit in the brackets is 20131 over 120. That's going to lead to minus 160. So, um, that actually is 167.758RR. Take away 160, and we get a value of, uh, and I'll give it to three significant figures, 7.76. Okay, um, so 7.76. So this is three significant figures okay so this is um billy's goodness of fit figure so you could think of it almost like that's his spread that's his deviation from what we expect now we're going to do the same for mel now so mel's working is going to be very similar to billy's but her observed are different so 6 squared over 10 that's her first observed observed then 12 squared over 20 plus 21 squared over 30, plus 47 squared over 40, plus, um, have I missed one? Oh no, sorry, not 47, 37. Where did 47 come from? 37, Let's try again, 37 squared over 40, plus 35 squared over 30, plus 29 squared over 20, plus 20 squared over 10 right so i'm just going to work that out and then i subtract the 160 and see what we get right calculating that the decimal i get oh sorry the fraction i get is 21913 over 120 okay that's the bit in the bracket so that's the sum of the observation squared over the expected um, minus 160 so let's see what decimal we get from that so that's something like one eight two six zero dot and we got takeaway 160 um, so if we do that i think i can always see already see the answer already that gives me a like this spread number of 22.6 and again this is to three significant figures right so the person who's closest to what we expect is Billy because his spread value is lower. The difference between what we expect and what we observe, that calculation x squared, the goodness of fit, his value is lower. So the one that's most likely to have the bias spinner is going to be Mel. 
Okay, so we can put uh, Mel's spinner is most likely to be biased. And if we wanted to give a reason, we could talk about her goodness of fit being higher. The goodness of fit is uh, greater than uh, Mel's one. Oh, sorry, Billy's one. Yeah, so it's this, this measure of spread. OK, so you now be able to do exercise 6A on pages 95 to 96. So when you're working out this goodness of fit, use the easy formula. Use this one. OK, so this is not in the formula book. So O stands for what you observed, the observed values. Normally like your observed frequencies. E stands for your expected values, your expected frequencies. Yeah, so I should really put the word frequencies here. Um, frequencies. So expected frequencies. And uh, N stands for the number of observations you'll probably see that somewhere in the question or you might need to work it out by finding the sum of the frequencies okay and basically the lower the value of x squared the better the fit to the expected um uh, expected outcomes the expected value so lower means better on this lower means better or better fit yeah and don't forget your h0 and h1 h0 is going to be that basically no difference between expected and observed no difference between your expected and your observed h1 is going to be that there is a difference between um expected and observed 